They say one of the biggest factors for the effectiveness of your mask is the fit. So adding a nose bridge wire really helps it to stay well against your face. I've also heard from many people that wear glasses that it helps minimize the fog. You're going to want cotton fabric for the outside of the mask. I'm also using cotton fabric for the lining as well as for the filter pocket. You're welcome to use interfacing on the back of the main fabric if you'd like to. I find I don't want to do that. There are so many layers of fabric already and there's going to be a filter inside the mask, so I didn't want to make it too heavy. But if you like having interfacing to give your mask more structure, it'd be totally fine to use it. You're also going to want a filter or filter fabric as well as wire for the nose bridge. Most of these you can purchase easily on Amazon. For your ties, you have a lot of options. You can use elastic, ribbon, fabric, or bias tape. I'm gonna be using elastic today on my mask. There are links below to my other contoured face mask videos. In those videos, it shows you several different ways to make straps, including adjustable straps. But today, I'm gonna to be making fixed elastic straps. You're also gonna to want to go to my website and print out the free pattern. It's linked below. There are a lot of sizes for this pattern and I'm gonna be making the size medium today. Let's begin by cutting out our pieces. Take your main fabric and lay it right side up. Fold it in half with right sides together and place your pattern on the fabric. Then trace and cut. Repeat this process for the lining. When you're ready to cut out your pocket pieces, you can either cut out the separate pattern piece for the pocket, or you can take your original pattern and fold it at the pocket line. These patterns will be the same, so you can choose whichever works best for you. and then trace and cut the pattern just like you did the lining in the main fabric. Once you have all your pieces cut out, it's time to put them together. Take your main face mask pieces and place them right sides together. Sew along the front curve with a quarter inch seam allowance. And you're gonna do the same with the lining in the pocket. Next, finger press your seam allowance open. Once it's laying open a bit, it's time to press. I like to start at the chin, the longer, flatter section. To press the curve, you can either use the very tip of your iron, or I found if you have a seam roll, the curve fits quite nicely around it. To help the mask lay flatter, make a few clips in the seam allowance along the nose curve. Repeat this process for the lining and for the pocket. We're now ready to add our straps. Lay the main fabric right side up. Measure 3 eighths of an inch down from the top corner. And place one end of your tie 3 eighths of an inch from that corner. Curve the end of the elastic around and place this end 3 eighths of an inch up from the bottom corner. Repeat on the other side. Again, if you prefer a different type of tie, see the links to my other videos below. Those videos will give you some other options. Now I'm going to baste the ends of the elastic in place with a 1 eighth inch seam allowance. Let's prepare the pocket. Lay your pocket fabric right side down and measure about 5 eighths inch away from the edge. Do this on both sides. If you'd like to, you can finish the two edges of the fabric here. You can serge them, do an overcast stitch, use fray check, or cut with your pinking shears. 
I'm not gonna do that. I think it works pretty fine just as it is, but you're welcome to do any of those things if you'd prefer to have a finished edge on your pocket. Now I'm gonna go to the ironing board and I'm gonna fold up the edge of my fabric towards the wrong side up to meet my line and I'm gonna press. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now I'm gonna stitch these two folds in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. Lay your lining fabric right side up. Take your pocket piece and lay it right side up as well. Place it on top of the lining and align the center seams and pin in place. If you'd like to, you can baste along the top and bottom edge with just less than a quarter inch seam allowance. About an eighth of an inch would do. But if you're not worried about your fabric moving or sliding out of place, basting is optional. I'm gonna go ahead and do so today just to be safe. Next, we're gonna create the channel for the nose bridge. This could vary depending on the size of wire that you're using. The nose bridge that I purchased from Amazon is about nine millimeters wide. So I'm gonna sew my mask together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then I need at least a quarter inch of space for my wire. And I'm gonna sew a seam beyond that to make my casing. To make sure I have enough space, I'm gonna sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance along the top curve. You may need a little bigger seam allowance, such as 3 fourths, if you have a larger size nose bridge wire. So I'm just gonna stitch along this edge with 5 eighths. If you're worried about making sure that that seam allowance is exact, you can make guide marks or draw the line beforehand if you like. I now have my casing for my nose bridge. Now's a good time to check the size of your filter. My filter fits just great in the window that I've created. If you're making a smaller size mask, you may want to make sure that you have a filter that you can trim to place it in your mask. If you're making a larger size mask and this section is really big, a lot larger than your filter, you may want to make a boundary line for your filter pocket up high so that it prevents it from sliding around. Let's go ahead and put our two pieces together. Lay your main fabric right side up. Lay your lining fabric with the pocket right side down so the pocket should be touching your main fabric. Align the center seams and pin all the way around. Once you've pinned everything in place, you're ready to sew. We're gonna sew all the way around with a quarter inch seam allowance, but you have to leave an opening to turn. I like to leave my opening on the side in between the two straps. So I'm just gonna mark, I can feel where the straps are, and so I'm just gonna leave my marks there and sew around. If you're making a really small size, you may have to leave your opening somewhere on the bottom edge to give yourself enough room. I'm now gonna clip the four corners and all of the curves. Now turn the mask right side out through the opening. You can see when I flipped my mask that my pocket is on the wrong side. So if that happens, just go ahead and flip again until the pocket's the right direction. Use the turning tool to poke out the edges and corners. Take the time to make sure that the edges are turned out all the way to the seam. Make sure the fabric at the opening is tucked inside. And we're ready to press. 
take care not to melt your elastic, so you can use a press cloth if you need to. I'm gonna be using a silk organza press cloth. I like those because you can see through them. We can now stitch our opening closed. You can either stitch across this end with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, or you can slip stitch it closed. I like to do an eighth of an inch top stitch along both edges, just so it looks the same on the left and right hand side of the mask. Turn your mask right side down. Slide your nose bridge wire up through the casing. A lot of the nose bridge wire that you can purchase nowadays is adhesive. I'm just leaving the adhesive strip on because I want to be able to take the wire in and out when I wash my mask. So I'm just gonna slide it up through the channel. I'll get it as centered as I can and then arch the nose bridge wire as I like. Then I'm gonna take my filter and slide it inside. And I now have a contoured face mask with a filter and nose bridge wire. Make sure you remove the wire and the filter whenever you wash your mask. Mm -hmm. 